Nobody brings it home like HBO and 87. It's the year to watch. The following movie has been rated PG by the Motion Picture Association of America. Parental guidance is suggested. Once upon a time, in 1985, there lived a young man named Marty McFly. A lovely lady held him in thrall. His noble family had far to go. Marty was a brave lad who took setbacks in stride. But even Marty wasn't prepared to be set back quite as far as he was that night in the Twin Pines shopping mall. You built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious Which one's your pop? That's him. Maybe you were adopted. What's with the life preserve? Apparently your mother is amorously infatuated with you instead of your father. So once upon a time, in 1955, there lived a young man out of time whose only quest was to get back to the future. Premieres Wednesday, April 1st on HBO. Dear you, the listener, no letters to mother, no letters to father tonight. I just wanted to take a few moments and thank you, the loyal listener who has stuck with me now for 27 days. After today, the show will be a little different for the remaining days of Marty McFly, but the plan is they'll all be here every final day of Marty McFly. And I'm doing it because I have something wrong with me. Also because I love doing it very much. Um, that's all I have to say. I don't even want to talk in this voice anymore. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for staying with me. Um, I can't believe I have to now photocopy all of these letters to send to the dozens and dozens of my listeners. And you know who you are. Specifically, you know who you are because there aren't enough of you to not know who you are. Um, but yeah, now I've got to get stuff these in envelopes and mail them out to each and every one of you. Um, and I appreciate you. Happy Marchy McFly. Sincerely, Michael, March 27th, 2021. One, two, three. Marchy McFly, Marchy McFly. Marchy McFly is Marchy McFly. Marchy McFly is Marchy McFly.
Day 27. March 27th, 2021, for the 27th day in a row. I've watched Back to the Future, and for the 27th day in a row, I'm here to talk to you about Back to the Future from Massachusetts. And folks, this might be the last day of Marchie McFly from Massachusetts. We'll see how things go tomorrow. Yesterday, and I teased it in the in the letter opening, which I wanted to do one more of those um, before the, the month ends because uh, I have to tell you, it's, it's not going to happen again. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to do everything I can to f- complete Marchie McFly. But please remember, this is a podcast, a very rarely known podcast. You know about it, okay? but not many other people do. I talked about real life something happening yesterday. And without going into great detail, my father-in-law in Florida isn't doing so well. He yesterday wasn't uh, great. Today seems to be a little better. However, um, we've decided to go down and visit him and my mother-in-law uh, along with um, her sister, my wife's sister, and my brother, I got a little, little spoiler alert, where brothers married to sisters. Um, we're going to go down and see him and spend a few days with him and um, just kind of hopefully be by his side and try to root him back into getting better. Imagine if I, if I said to my wife, uh, dear, I can't go with you. I have to continue podcasting about Back to the Future. You see, that can't happen. That wouldn't happen. I am not, as Marty would say, what do I, become an asshole or something? No, I'm not. I'm a good husband. I'm a good son-in-law. He's a good man. I'm not patting myself on the back, but um, it sucks, you know? I'm not talking about the podcast. Just life in general, getting old. We're at the age now where where we're seeing our parents become old. I'm in my 40s now, and, um, you know, like, my parents were in their 40s. They were like grown-ups. I'm in my 40s, and I'm like, oh, did I record The Flash? And now I need to talk about Back to the Future. But I look at my parents, and they're like, they're old now. And my my in-laws are even older. Um, So it's good. It's good for my wife. It's good for for us. It's good for the family. And it's good to see them because they usually don't come home for a few months. And, you know, if he's recovering down there, it could be even longer. But knock on wood, I just knocked on wood. Uh, everything turns out for the best. Now, that being said, he's in the hospital and there's going to be a lot of downtime where we can't do anything. So you know what I'm going to do, right? You know what I'm going to do. At least I'm going to take some time, maybe spread out throughout the day to watch Back to the Future every day. I have to do it for me, not for the podcast, but for my mental well-being. I am not ready to fly down to Florida. I have not been vaccinated, and yet tomorrow morning I'm doing it. So I don't, I'm like, oh no, I don't want to go to Florida, and, and like, and and I want to, you know, I hope everyone wears a mask, and I'm not going to touch anybody, and I don't want to see anybody, and I don't want to see family, and I, I I want to drink hand sanitizer and bathe in it. I want to bathe in it. I'm like, oh, we can go into Publix and get hand sanitizer. Oh no, I don't want to go into Publix. I hope they make you wear masks. I am I'm a bit of a freak with the germs um i didn't i didn't think i was but this past year i've become one uh and i don't like flying all that much anyway but here's the thing i've downloaded back to the future to my phone i've downloaded it to my chromebook i am fully equipped we're going to be staying with my mother-in-law there's wi-fi there so i actually did a little uh uh pre-planning is that really a thing isn't all planning pre-planning i did a little pre-planning so there are little openings for the next few days, most of what I'm going to be doing is talking into my phone. So it's not going to be um, the stellar, high-quality audio that you're used to. And the episodes, let's be honest, they are not going to be that long, okay? Now, there's going to be times where I'm going to want to go for long walks. So that's when I'm going to try to do these things. Um, I still have a, a goal for the final day of the month. I have an idea that I like to do. I did it with Joggist, and I'd like to do the same thing for uh, Marchie McFly. So that's the plan. 
That's the plan. We're actually in Florida until Thursday. So for the rest of Marchie McFly, I will be in Florida after today. We're not leaving um, super early tomorrow, so I might actually be able to watch Back to the Future before we even leave for the airport. But um, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the life of a podcaster, you know? You just go with the flow. Uh, and the show does not come first. It just doesn't. But if you can do it and you want to do it, you know, I say we do it. I've, uh, I've done eight movie months. And, no, no, I'm sorry. I've done seven movie months. I've done uh, a month of Joggist. And like, unbelievably, I've never run into something that would interfere. We've just been lucky as far as like, you know, sickness or, or family tragedies or issues or anything like that. I've been lucky with that. And here we are. I'm faced with it. And if like, look, if, if it doesn't happen and it couldn't happen, we had a good run. We did it. We made it 27 days. Not bad. And let's be honest. I'm going to tell you right now, if for some whatever reason, I can't do a day, Marchie McFly will spill over into Maple McFly if it has to. But um, God willing, everything's smooth with our visits and visiting him and the family and um, get a little time to hit record and talk about, probably just tell you more about what's going on in my day than I am Back to the Future at that point. My goodness, I don't even know if I'm going to have notes in front of me. But enough with this real world stuff. I need to escape. You need to take me away. I don't mind. But you got to promise me I'll be back in time. So enough. Enough of this real world stuff. I'm here to talk to you. I just want to get that out of the way and give you an idea of what's, why things are different tomorrow um, and going forward. I guess I could have just told you tomorrow. But why spring that on you? my loyal, faithful listeners. And besides, tomorrow is tomorrow. We're here today, and I'm here to talk to you about my notes. Yes, I took more notes. Um, one thing, it's, it's funny to me that um, I start talking about Back to the Future in March, and I don't think of March as anything with uh, Back to the Future. But... Um, I feel like the more, like this month, all of a sudden I'm seeing things happen. I'm like, wait, what the, like this out of all the months, this is the month that Discovery Plus put out a show and like about Back to the Future. I watched the second episode. It is so much fun. They, this time they went to Massachusetts to meet uh, these collectors, a the father-son collectors. Out, it seems like it's out in Western Mass, like an hour away from where I am. When things are better and the world is better, I want to go there. I don't know if it costs money to see, the, to see their exhibit, but their exhibit is like in their house. They turn their house into a museum. It is crazy. Um, they have a couple DeLoreans, like they have a piece of one. They have another one. They have like the clock tower, the actual clock. They have the lions. They have hoverboards. They have a recreation of Doc's, um, um, like the beginning with all the clocks and the coffee pot and everything. They even have the plutonium. They have so many things. They have. They have. They said the original screen used controller that that uh, Doc that you know Christopher Lloyd used. They have so so many things, and I guess everything they're saying has um you know is like legit screen used stuff as far as I can tell. It is ridiculous, and the show is just fun because we got more Christopher Lloyd um, talking about Back to the Future and talking about different things, and we got another cameo this time. Harry Waters Jr. was there like playing a guy who was helping them rent a car. And of course, it said uh, Marvin on his um, on his his name tag. He was, you know, Marvin Berry himself was there and he got them to rent this big car. And then he called someone. He's like, hey, it's Marvin, you know, Marvin Berry. You remember that car I got? I, I We were supposed to rent. I got two idiots from Hollywood to rent it. And he's laughing. So it was cool to see another um, cameo from Back to the Future. I still have two more episodes of that to watch. Uh, so I'll probably be watching that well into Maple McFly. <laughs> but um, that was a fun show. And again, like then I went to Target today. Why did I go? I went to get some masks and some toothbrushes and some hand sanitizer. 
and at the at the checkout there's a standy area for um back to the future trilogy it says back to the future the ultimate trilogy like what it's just out there for sale in my local target right at the counter like at the they have like an end case huh what how'd that happen but the biggest thing and i tweet not the biggest thing but the weirdest thing i tweeted about this the other day i went for a walk um by myself because my dog was in daycare so i went for a nice walk by myself and i i so my street like you go down a hill then it, you know it goes down a little ways at the end it it breaks out into another street so you can take a right you can take a left but there's a corner and you know there's cars you gotta watch where you're going and a guy on a black scooter went by like the old-fashioned scooter like you saw like jason bateman used in the hogan family the, the scooter you wanted from the 80s one of those type of thing like a vespa but not a vespa like a little honda or something he's driving by in his black vespa i'll call it a vespa and he's got a little helmet on and he's got a radio playing and i swear to god when he turned the corner and the radio i could came in like you know when you kind of hear a radio coming in from a car and then it goes Ooh, and then it fades away i heard the voice of an angel the voice of huey lewis and it was like don't need money don't take fame don't need no credit card to ride this train and i was like oh my god i wanted to grab a skateboard skate up on behind the scooter grab the end of it and just have him take me home it was ridiculous i said how is that possibly happening in all like out of any time that would happen like what the hell is going on here so i immediately tweeted about it true story and i forgot to mention it for the last couple days uh, but I just thought that was ridiculous. So I just feel like, you know, maybe it's me looking for signs. I feel like maybe when I was, no, nah, I don't think so. When I was doing Jogus, it really wasn't, I don't, I don't remember seeing these things happening. I remember seeing lots of YouTube videos about Jaws because all, all I did was search for them. But, um, you know, there was never the, uh, there was never these weird little coincidences like, what? What is going on? Uh, another one is, and I haven't listened to it yet, uh, but Christopher Lloyd is on Mark Marin's podcast. And I'm like, what? I didn't even know that. I need to listen to that. And I have to uh, give a, a thank you to David Allen, my friend on Twitter at Piano Lullaby for letting me know about this. I have something now to listen to. Maybe while I'm, you know, sleeping on the plane. Well, awake on the plane, but um, I don't know. I have so many things I've downloaded to watch on the plane tomorrow. But uh, I look forward to listening to that. And I, I hopefully I can listen to it before the month is done, I already have it on my pod on my uh, uh, podcast app. So, you know, that's the plan at least. Thank you, David, uh, again for pointing that out to me. David, all the way from the UK, which I believe stands for United. I want to say Kingdom, but I'm not a thousand percent sure on that. Um, anyway, anywho, I, I like anywho. It's so much funnier. I actually have like paper notes too. I have paper notes and I still have my Evernote pad of things that I haven't talked about. Um, so why don't we do a few quick notes before yawning and calling it a night. You know, these episodes I wanted to do, I wanted to do kind of like themes. Like I was going to do one that was going to be the, either be called, um, this one goes out to all your lovers out there or don't nobody go nowhere or where the pinheads where I talked about all the music. Um, I talk about, I mentioned, uh, the Harry Waters who played, I uh, played, um, Marvin Berry and how he's like a professor now, like a like a like a professor in drama. Um, I wanted to talk about, of course, Huey Lewis and the whole thing with if you ever look up, uh, you know, Huey Lewis before he did Back to the Future, he was actually asked to do a song for Ghostbusters and he turned it down. And then all of a sudden Ray Parker Jr. shows up with Ghostbusters and it sounds a little familiar. Um if you didn't know that, you know, I'm not going to take the time now to, to pull the audio. I was going to do this whole th dramatic thing. But I'm going to do it for you now uh, with my voice. Ready? Something strange in the neighborhood. Ghostbuster. 
Doodly dee, I want a new drug. Doodly dee, does it make me sick? Doodly dee, dee. When my smoke makes me drive my car, or make me feel three feet thick. Do do doodly dee. Excuse me, does that sound familiar? Oh yes, it does. Because Ray Parker Jr. stole the bass line, stole the line from uh, Mr. Huey Lewis himself. That's why Huey has a thousand hits, and Ray Parker Jr. has a do do doodly dee dee a do do doodly dee dee. Anyway, I don't know if that um, if that bothered Huey. It's not you know like like rubbed him the wrong way to do movie soundtracks. Maybe not because a year later he was you know he did two fantastic songs. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I've seen Huey Lewis in concert with uh, with my wife and and her sister, my 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 brother and um, my my friend Chris and his wife and. Um, the, the Chris, that guy, he's a huge Huey Lewis guy, and he's a humongous Back to the Future guy. He's got he's got interviews of he's got um, interviews. He's got autographs of all of them. He's gone to like the Comic Cons. He's met all of them. He's got like a big Star Wars collection. Like he he has the collection I want. Um, but I remember like when you know Power of Love came on, we we went we we loved it. But when they played Back in Time, we went nuts. It was like let's go back in time. I'm like, oh my God. And they were great. I mean, this is a while ago now. This is like, I want to say 15, 16, 17 years ago, if not longer. Crazy. <sighs> Time has passed. I remember this land was farmland as far as the eye could see. Old man Peabody had this crazy idea about breeding pine trees. That's another thing I wanted to do. I wanted to look up. Do you breed, do you breed trees? Is that something? Like the, this is like the wish list of things that I haven't done that I had notes for, that um. But I have little other notes like, you know, remember, remember the Burger King stuff that we see lying around Doc's house when Marty first opens the door. There's more Burger King wrappers outside the door, so Doc is a mess, and he's just like, uh, he he's get, letting Burger King get everywhere, which is you know he's a man of science, but he doesn't seem to be a man of um of of hygiene all that much, uh. And another thing I noticed was that morning, like, think about what we saw in the morning. That was Doc's morning routine. I don't know if I've talked about this already. I may have. But it's like the alarm goes off. Boom. The TV goes, the radio goes on with the news. The TV goes on with the news. The coffee pot gets there to make him his coffee. The toast makes him his breakfast. And then the dog food makes the dog breakfast. And he's trying to find a more efficient way to do everything. Uh, but he's been so wrapped up in the time machine that he kind of forgot about this and he let it run and it runs every day. And I can't believe it hasn't burned down with that toast. I've talked about the punching in the stomach. These are the notes I feel like I've done. Oh yeah, I wanted to talk about who the other judges with, uh, I was going to, who are the pinheads? Who are the guys in the pinheads? One of the guys who played the pinhead, who, who was the bass player in the pinheads, was um, uh, Marty's, I mean, Michael J. Fox's guitar teacher for the movie. I think he's done other, I think he, I think he helped George Clooney play guitar in some movie. I don't know, was it Attack of the Killer Tomatoes 2? <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know who any of the judges are, and I, and I keep thinking to look them up, and then I don't. And now we've come this far where I'm going to be doing these walking around avoiding you know 90 year old people in Florida tomorrow oh my god oh, um, I wrote something now called coincidence meets fate or creates fate what the hell is that what in the hell does that mean I have so many notes that I haven't I mean I don't should I should feel like I should go through them every note and see if I've um, answered that or haven't answered that but I want to do it on the 30th day. Kushida. I didn't talk about Kushida. Kushida is a WWE wrestler. Okay, say what you want about wrestling. This guy, he's a Japanese wrestler who uh, now wrestles in the WWE. Okay, Wednesday nights, he's on uh, USA Network. He basically um, models his look after friggin' Marty McFly. He wears the vest. Uh, from part one, he wears this. The shoes look like the self-lacing shoes. He has a watch that he keeps looking at. He calls his moves like the time splitter and the hoverboard. And he wears jeans, but I don't know if they're real jeans. Like he is basically doing it. Marty McFly. He wears the Doc Brown, um, you know, glasses at the end where roads. We don't need roads. Um, and there's like a photo of him in the ring with a guy dressed up like Doc Brown. So he like, like. 
I think in Japanese wrestling, they do a lot of big characters, like silly characters even. And he he brought that here to the United States. And I'm all for it because it's back to the future. But I mean, that's if that's if you're into wrestling. And I know, I know what people are going to say. Well, that's fake. I don't care. Do you know Back to the Future didn't happen either? Except in my heart. Um, you know what? Do I talk about quotes? And st- or do I do all this on the last day when I'm pulling things up? Oh, Paul Hansen was the bass player. He was also Fox's guitar coach for that movie and actually helped, played Michael's guitar solo in the scene. Oh, he actually played the guitar solo. Um, and the other pinheads were Lee Brownfield and Robert DeLapp. Looks like I actually did um, make that note. How amazing is that? Um, yeah, I think, I think, I think I've done it. Uh, I talk about all these what ifs, what ifs. The, the funniest one was Doc falling off the clock tower. Um, and I still want to know what Marty and Doc did with the bodies of the two uh, um, Libyan terrorists. Um, I wrote down Marty invented skateboarding, rock and roll, and he sort of invented time travel because he, his, him showing up actually pushed Doc to succeed in, in, in create time travel. Um, right. I mean, that's, that kind of is that loop, that time loop that is so, uh, so amazing about these time travel movies. I love when they do that thing. Yeah, I said, what is pine trees? Look that up. I never looked it up. I was going to look up define flux and define capacitor because flux means something's in flux, like it's constantly in motion and change. And I guess that's what you're doing. You're changing time. I don't know. Uh, Oh, and finally, I'm going to talk about one more note. Um, Oh, (laughs) was Marty going to turn at the Fox Auto booth? He drove straight at it. And then he went back to 55. But what was he planning on doing at that point? Was he going to just turn at the last second? Probably. That DeLorean, he could handle that thing. Kid's 17. He drives like he's like, you know, in NASCAR. Uh, And the last thing, and I feel like I have, I don't know if I've said this already, but when he's like, unless you know somebody who plays guitar, and then all of a sudden we see Marty playing guitar. Marty's out of tune. Listen to that first chord. It's a, and they say we're in B, but it seems like they're in B minor, so they might be tuned down. Uh, but he's like, bling, 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 bling. Like the guitar is really out of tune. But um, I think it has to do with him kind of fading because later when he's when he pops up at like the greatest music cue in, in cinematic history, or at least the greatest music cue in that in that movie, when this the fading of the, and then George goes to kiss Lorraine and loving the happiness, whoa. And like it works. Like the music comes back and then boom, uh, uh, Michael J. Fox pops up and it's like um, Marvin Berry's even like inspired by that and he, he belts out singing more a big smile on his face and George is making out with Lorraine and waving to Marty and Marty's waving and sees it his hands back I mean come on it doesn't get any better than this there are so many climaxes in this movie that sounded creepy but there are so many like major moments it's you know the punch is the change in George's life the kiss is the change in George's life and Marty's life going back to the future and then of course seeing um, everybody and then of course flying off into the future at the end. Uh, But we're not at the end. We're not at the end here, folks. We still have other days left. Many other days left. And by many, I mean 28, 29, 30, and 31. After today, there's only four more days left. And all those four days will be shot on location. I'm excited to see what happens uh, I'm not excited to go, but it'd be really good to see my father-in-law and for my wife to be able to see him. Um, but other than that, I think I've done, I think I've nailed it. You know where to find me on Twitter and Instagram at Geek Mentality. The Facebook page is Fans Not Experts, and the website is fansnotexperts.com. Um, I have the end saved for every episode tomorrow, but you might be like, I might say my big finishing line and then a second goes by before it starts playing. So please uh, excuse the crudity of the upcoming episodes. I don't have time to edit them or paint them to scale. And that's all I have to say. And with that, my friends, here is my theme song. This is my podcast. I made it. Geek Mentality is what I named it. And I think you should listen and subscribe. Cause I'm kind of funny and awesome I think that I'm worth your time And I'm kind of handsome My mom says, please listen in 
Please subscribe At least listen to this Episode Bad non-experts What are you looking at, butthead?